hello everyone welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here hello my name is Juliet in today's video I will be making a palazzo pant so here's my fabric I folded it into two using the tie measurement divided by two plus one inch of allowance so the tie measurement I'm working with is 22 inches divided by two that is 11 plus one inch of allowance making it 12 so here I am marking the length this palazzo is going to have um, ruffles on the under part so my length I'm marking it here plus one inch I took out four inches from the length I'm going to replace that with pleats so I'm marking the length I want now plus extra one inch let's say full length is 40 minus 4 which I'm going to replace with pleats making it 36 add one inch to that making it 37 so notice that I'm not leaving anything out, I'm marking exactly the length. Here I'm, mar I'm marking the crotch, which is um, the hip measurement divided by 4. So hip measurement here is 36 divided by 4, that is 9. So I'm marking 9 from the upper part down. So I've connected that into a straight line. Next, on that crotch line, I'm marking the hip measurement divided by 4 plus 1 inch hip divided by 4 plus 1 I'm marking the same thing all the way to the waistline I didn't take any inches out of the waistline but we're still going to add a 1 inch band to it later on so I'm connecting this into a straight line and I'm going to be curving it out to form the crotch So next on this line, on the up on the waist line, I'm going to mark quarter of the waist measurement plus one and a half inches of allowance and then another one inch for that. The dart actually is optional but I'll be adding it to these trousers. So I'm going to connect from that waist line to the crotch line like so. So next I'm going to get the middle of this um, tie measurement. I have 12 here, so half of that is 6. I'm going to mark that 6 all the way to the lower part. So next I'm going to draw a line straight down. And then on this lower part, I'm going to mark exactly the tie measurement. So the tie measurement is 22. So divided by 2, that is 11. So I placed half of 11 on that center line. And then I marked 11 on this side. And then on the other side. So half of 11 is 5 and a half. So I place five and a half on that line and then I marked 11 on one side and then where the tip is ending on the other side. So next I'm going to connect with a line. There's no need for a knee measurement in this case. So I didn't rule that out. Next I'm cutting. So this is it for the front. So using my ample curve, I'm going to blend that crotch line out. You don't want your hip to be pointy. So 
So next I'm going to fold my fabric again, making sure it is 3 inches wider than the front piece. So we have 12 on the front piece, so we're going to add 3 inches to that, making it 15 inches on fold. And it's also going to be longer by 1.5 inches. So next on this upper part, I am marking one and a half inches. Please note that I am not including the edge of the Ankara fabric in my measurement. So after marking one and a half inches all across, I rule that out. I'm going to place the front piece on it, making sure the waistline is sitting on that one and a half inches line. So next off, I'm going to extend that point upwards and then slant to this side of the front piece. That is going to be the back waistline. So on this crotch line, I'm going to add two and a half inches. So if you're a plus size person, you should make it three. Then the rest of the sides, I'm going to be adding two inches all the way to the hem. So for this other side, it's going to be exactly like the front. So next I'm cutting. Here is the front and the back pieces. The next thing is to mark the dart. So I'm folding it into two equal halves on the upper side. So I'm going to mark a dart of four inches for the front. And then the back I will mark five inches. That is the length. Then I mark half inch on both sides and I connect in the slant to the end of the dart. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other front piece. Then the back is going to be longer than the front with one inch. So next I'm going to be installing the pocket. I have two pieces of fabric here. They are measuring 13 inches by 13 inches. So I place them right sides facing each other. And then I'm folding into two as you can see. So here's the front piece. The two front pieces. I'm placing them like so. That is the side seam of the front piece. And then the folded end of the pocket piece is on the inside. So I'm going to trim out following the shape of the trouser like so. 
Next, I'm going to notch the upper part and then I will keep one aside. Here is one front piece, wrong side facing up, and then the pocket piece, wrong side facing the wrong side of the trousers. So, wrong side of the pocket piece facing the wrong side of the front trouser piece. I'm going to place them on top of each other like so. And then turning to the right side. I marked two and a half inches from that point inwards. And then I marked seven inches down from the top part. I made a notch, which is about quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to fold like so using my iron. I will iron it down. Then I'll turn it to the wrong side. I will use hemming gum to hold that part down before we continue. So we're going to go top stitch there all the way up and then I will fold the pocket into two like so and then close the down the pocket bag on the down part but for now I'm going to use my pins to hold them in place. Is where we're going to sew later on, like so. Then this top part as well, I'm going to pin it in place for now. I'm going to be repeating exactly the same thing on the second front piece. So here is the second um, front piece. This is the wrong side facing up. I'm going to place the wrong side of the pocket facing the wrong side of the trouser piece. I turned it to the right side. And then on this top part, I'm going to mark two and a half inches inwards and then seven inches down from the top. Using my scissors, I will make a notch of about a quarter of an inch and then I will fold it in like so. So after I need it down, I will use my hemming gum to hold that part in place. Next I will fold over and pin. I will go through the pocket bags later on. But for now, I just use my pins to hold them in place so they don't move. I will do the same for the upper part. So that is it on how to install slant pockets to your trousers.
So next I went ahead to cut lining pieces for both the front and the back and my lining is stopping along the knee line. So I'm transferring the dart marks to the lining pieces as well. So this is for the back. I'm going to go sew all four darts together and then I will do the same for the front. Now for the front piece, I'm going to also transfer the darts to the lining. But before sewing the darts, I will remove the pins from the pocket and then sew the darts only on the trouser piece. I'm not sewing the pocket. So the darts will be sewn only on the trouser pieces before I will pin back the pockets in place. I will do that and show you. I'm also going to hem the lower part of all the lining pieces. So here they are, all the darts, I've sewn all the darts on both the lining and the main fabric. I've also hemmed the lower part of the lining. I also ironed my darts nicely. So next I placed the back piece here, right sides together. And then I'm placing the wrong side of the lining piece to the wrong side of the back pieces like so. And then I'm going to make sure they are aligned. Then I will go sew the crotch point using half of an inch. I'm going to do the same thing to the front pieces. I'll place both front pieces together. So I've sewn the slant on the pocket and also the pocket bags, a top stitch on the pocket rather, and I've sewn the down part of the pocket. So I'm going to place the lining on the wrong side of both of them. And then I will go and sew on the crotch the same way we did the back using half of an inch. So here is it, I have sewn and I also ironed the part. This is for the front. Next I'm going to place them together, both um, front and back pieces, right sides facing each other. I'm going to be sewing the side seams that I will first of all pin them in place. And then we will mark the waist before I will take it and um, join them together. So it's going to have a zip by the sides. So on one side we are going to come down by 8 inches. That is where the zip is going to sit before we sew. But let's pin it together first. So here is it. I pinned um, the front to the back. Next I'm marking the waist. So from that middle point I marked quarter of the waist measurement on one side. And then I'm marking quarter of the waist measurement on this other side as well. Starting from that center point. So the waist I'm working with is 24. So I mark 6 on both sides. So from that waist measurement, I'm also going to measure the hip to be sure that I have more than what I need, which I did. And if you follow exactly what I've been doing, you will too. So from that waist measurement, I'm just going to sew using half of an inch all the way to the down. It is only the waist that I need it to be exactly what I want. So I'm going to sew from the top, top stitch where that zip is going to start and then continue sewing. So I sewed all the way because I need that crease to be able to fix my zip later. Next, 
I am sewing the inseam so I match the crotch together and then I'm going to sew using half inch all the way on both sides so after that this is the piece that I am going to pleat on the lower part I make sure it's about two times what I have on the hem of the trousers which is 22 inches so times 2 that is 44 I already hemmed one side of it so I am marking what I need exactly here which is 4 inches plus half for joining it to the trousers I folded it before cutting so I will get exactly what I want so I have two of these pieces for both legs of the trousers Next, I'm going to go join them together using half inch. I'll repeat the same for the other piece, and then here is the waistband, it's three inches wide, and then for the length, it's a bit more than my more than the waist measurement I'm working with. I'm going to add the medium weight um, gum stitch to it. I'm using my iron to glue that after which I will trim the excess on the sides and then I will fold half inch on both sides and then fold again in the middle I'm folding into two now so this band is going to be just one inch you can make it two or one and a half if you want our trouser is already exactly the length that we have so this band is going to just make it a little more high waisted so next I'm going to go close both ends together like so. Here is it, I've closed it together. This is a waistband. I've also joined these ruffle pieces together as well. So next I'm going to place them right sides together, that's the ruffle piece and the trouser piece and then I'm going to go pleat on top of this lower part like so all around for both legs after which I will add the waistband to the waist. I've already added the zip as you can see. I'm going to trim the excess of the zip off before sewing the waistband through it. I'm going to put the waistband like so, so the trouser piece is going to be in between it. So it's all the way to the other side, leaving a bit of excess for the hook and eye. So here is it, the ruffles are in place, my waistband as well. Everything looking beautiful. So that is the end of this video, you guys. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Share it with your friends and I will see you in my next video. Hold on to see the finished look of my client. Thank you for watching again and bye. <music>